Welcome to La Parisima Mission State Historic Park. My name is Parker and I would like to invite you to join me on an adventure as we trickle into the world of water at La Parisima Mission. I hope that you are soaked to join me and I encourage you all to absorb all the information that you can behind our multifaceted water system. Are you ready to join me on our slippery adventure? Well, let's go! A drop of water can represent so many things. Take a look at this droplet. Imagine the journey it took to get to the mission grounds. Where did it come from? How did it get here? What really is a droplet of water? What does water mean to you? Well, when I think of water, I reflect over the importance of water for everyday life. We need water to drink, grow crops, to provide a habitat for plants and animals to live, and to provide for a healthy environment for our future. The same goes for life at La Parisima Mission. Water is a necessity that was needed for drinking, cooking, laundry, bathing, to provide for the ranching, and of course the crops at the mission. As we continue to flow deeper into the subject, I want you to remember our water droplet, as we will be following this droplet as it makes its way through the different features of our water system. But before I end, I want to ask you a few questions. What do you use your water for? Where does it come from? And what does the saying, water conservation, mean to you? Before we continue, we must recognize how California missions, like La Parisima, play a role in the change of our treasured natural resources. Water is perhaps one of our most treasured natural resources, but why is it? It is important to understand that the use of water increased during mission times. For example, by the year 1821, as many as 24,000 domestic animals graze across unfenced mission lands, their hoofs trample native vegetation, and the animals pollute vital water sources the Shumash have used for centuries. This example, provided by one of our displays at the visitor center, allows us to understand that livestock, such as cattle, horses, and even sheep, began to change the water quality and the natural flow of rivers, creeks, and streams. In addition, the livestock began to consume indigenous vegetation, leading to a great change in the natural world. When you think about the change in water quality and the destruction of waterways by newly brought livestock, how does this make you feel? Was this really necessary? What could have been done differently if anything at all. Here's that fresh droplet of water we looked at at our earlier episode. Let's revisit one of our key questions. Where did this droplet come from? Well, there are a variety of ways that water appears in our region. The first way is by surface water, such as creeks and rivers that receive water from precipitation, such as rain and snow. Los Barros Creek that runs directly through the park serves as one example of a source of a surface water. Another way is through groundwater. La Parisima is a part of the San Inez groundwater basin. The groundwater is found between 60 and 200 feet below the surface. However, our story begins here, at one of several natural springs found on the land surrounding the mission. This spring in particular is located approximately one mile away from the mission center. And wait, did you see that? There is our droplet of water flowing from the spring. I wonder how it will travel to the mission center.
Vamos a pensar. ¿Qué significa las zanjas? Well, when we look at the mission, las zanjas, also known as los acudoctos, bring water to and from the mission, we know this word in English as the aqueducts. This word is derived from Latin, with aqua meaning water, and ducere meaning to lead. Aqueducts have been used for thousands of years by a number of ancient civilizations. As we follow our aqueduct system here at La Prisma Mission, it is transporting our sea of water droplets from the natural springs towards our mission grounds. The straight yet smooth stone trenches guide the water to our next stop. Another unique feature used to transport water is that of clay pipes. These pipes were made by expert craftsmen in our pottery shop. These clay pipes primarily transport water underground. Keep this in mind as we will be discussing the role of clay pipes a little bit later on. In addition, we also have some insight about water being transported in aqueducts from nearby springs located several miles away from our mission. In an annual report from January 1st, 1814, Padre Mariano Payeres states, in order to have a greater supply of water and to irrigate the summer maiz fields, the spring of the old mission site has also been diverted here using the same ditch which used to carry the river water over there. This water crosses the river via the old aqueduct system from the Santa Ines, and after fructifying all of our beautiful fields, it arrives here some 500 paces from our residences to offer us crystalline soft water when we need it. Our droplet of water has finally fallen into our cistern. A cistern is used to hold and to capture water. Similar to our aqueducts, cisterns have been used throughout the world for thousands of years. Many historical articles reference how cisterns have been used since the Neolithic age. Cisterns receive water from our aqueducts, just like what we see here, while also capturing water from the winter rains. Cisterns are important when we observe seasonal variations in our climate, especially during years of drought. Droughts are seasons when there is little to no rainfall. This reduces the amount of water available to water crops, to drink, and to use for other purposes. The years 1816 through 1817 are characterized by a severe drought. We know this from a letter Father Mariano Payeras writes on December 30th, 1816. He writes, be thankful for so much because the weather is dry. I am praying and though God does not yet want to give us rain, we do not lose hope for he must water our fields. Cisterns are among the most important aspect of our water system, as well as in our communities throughout the world today, as they help to secure and hold our water resources during a time of need. Do you have a cistern at your home or perhaps in your community? As we continue our adventure of discovering where and how our water droplet travels, Let's discover a little bit about one of my favorite places at La Prisma Mission, the Spring House. Water from our cisterns and nearby springs meet here at the Spring House. This house is used to filter the water. Water filtration removes debris, some bacteria, and other particles in the water. The Spring House does not purify the water. Water purification is when chemicals or sunlight is used to remove harmful bacteria from the water. Well, back to the filtration process. Water is filtered with gravel, sand, and charcoal at the spring house. 
each of these materials makes the water cleaner. Once the water has been filtered, it travels from here to the mission grounds. But how will the water droplet get to the mission? Huh. Well, if you're thinking what I am thinking, water pipes. We are currently located on a hill behind the mission. Using the force of gravity, the water will be transported in the pipes to our next stop, the mission fountain. I want to leave you with a question to ponder, though. How is your drinking water filtered and purified in your community? Oh, well, I lost sight of our water droplet here. Let me know if you see it, okay? Anyways, well, welcome to La Fuente, the Mission Fountain. This is where the Mission residents gather to collect fresh, clean drinking water. The residents bring their cups, canteens, and other containers here to collect fresh water. Do you collect your water from a fountain like this? Well, as a matter of fact though, our water doesn't always stay in this fountain. It keeps moving, so the water doesn't get stagnant. Well, I wonder where our water droplet is off to next. There it is! Did you spot that droplet of water? Well, it has made the journey to the lavendery at the mission. This is where the mission residents go to bathe and wash their clothes. Do you bathe or wash your clothes at a place like this? Well, the process of washing clothes was done on the slope surface. All of the dirty water runs directly into this drainage channel without contaminating our clean water in the center of this water feature. It appears that our droplet has gotten a little dirty, so let's discover where the dirty water goes. It exits the lavenderia through a pipe and enters yet another cistern. This cistern can be used to hold the dirty water, although the water primarily exits through the hole at the other side. This hole leads to another aqueduct. This water system has gotten so complex. Let's take a journey to see where this aqueduct takes us. Any guesses? Well, nice work. If you said the farming fields, great job. The water that cannot be used for drinking, bathing, or washing clothes is now used to water the crops. This shows that our water system does not go to waste and is used for a multitude of uses. At La Purissima Mission, a number of crops were produced, including artichokes, wheat, and even barley, and of course, pears, among a plethora of other crops. Well, it appears that our drop of water has provided nourishment for many of the crops at the mission. I guess this is where our journey following the droplet ends. Well, when I think of the water system at La Purissima Mission, the word resourceful comes to my mind. When you think of the word resourceful, what do you think of? Hmm. Well, I think of the ability to solve problems that we face and the ability to come up with innovative solutions to those very problems. Here at La Parisville Mission, the residents had to figure out several items, including where to get water from, to design stone features such as dams, aqueducts like what's behind me, ooh, cisterns, pipes, filters, and even fountains like our lavenderia. And they even had to build these stone features as well, and come up with clever solutions to sustain the community in times of drought while also continuing to innovate as the population and the amount of crops planted grew within this very community. Well, I really hope that you all have enjoyed our adventure as we trickled into the world of water at La Purissima Mission. I hope that you have absorbed a lot of great knowledge about our history and science behind our multifaceted water system. And I encourage each of you to become stewards of our water resources 
and share with others how we can conserve, use less water, and become more resourceful within our treasured natural resources. Lastly, we saw the water system in my community here at La Purissima Mission. But I encourage each of you to discover the water system in your community. Where does your water come from? How is it purified? How does the water get to your home? Is the water used for more than one purpose? What steps can you take to become more resourceful with the water that you use in your community?